all you look at is a quick one time. Okay. Uh, hold on your age, I can do the same stuff. It's a funky looking machine. That's cool. There's water in the car. Yeah, the mice got all in it. You can see right there. Oh, yeah. I don't think you're going to get anywhere with that, but you can give it a shot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh there she oh. goes. It moved. It moved. It, it moved. <laughs> Good. Nice. Hi guys, this is Ed. Ed is uh, the grandson of the builder. Is that what yeah, it was? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And give me a little bit of history behind it. My grandfather built this back in, in the six, six, early sixties, and it's a articulating front end tractor. Doodle bug, probably call it. Yeah, I don't know what you would call it. It's yeah. it's with a handmade thing that he built. It's got a nineteen. 60s Briggs and Stratton. I think it's an eight horse motor on it. It's got a 34 Ford three speed stick with reverse with a creeper gear. Um, 34 Ford um, gear, the steering box on it. It's got a 39 to a 40, 41 rear end with brakes. Nice. And stuff. So. And you guys just kind of built it up to draw logs, track logs. He, I, I don't know. He, I, he just, I don't know if he used it for doing work around his yard when they, you know, when they had just the having house. fun, having fun with it. And <laughs> cool. Because my mother's around somewhere. She's got a picture of me with him on it when I was a kid. Nice. Yeah. And this has been sitting down here like 10, 15 years, something like that. Yeah, probably since we built the addition. Gotcha. Cool. So we're going to go do our best to drag that out <laughs> and resurrect it. Thanks. It should come right up. It looks like, it's got, it looks like it's got a tube in it. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, as long as it's not rotted. And my air tank has a charge still in it. Wrong way. Going up. Yep. I don't think it would go up. You just need enough to get it up the trailer anyway. Yeah, well, yeah. We'll call that a win. We won't push our luck. Yeah. You guys yell if you see something funky, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't want to go easy? No. No, I think the might be in gear. I don't think it's in gear. Do you want me to? No, it ain't in gear. Probably the brakes are just locked up from sitting. Yeah. Well, here's the other pull cord that I had for it. I think you see that in the light. It's got white walls. Oh yeah. <laughs> There's some pet cats that goes with it. They're on it, that father. Oh, they're on it? Yeah.
a bunch of the cable to get lower on the spool so you get a little bit more power the gear ratio is better I don't have a blocking tackle sorry about the wind we went around a couple times just to use up some cable So hey guys, how's it going? I would definitely say this is uh, one person's uh, attraction to making something by hand. And uh, sometimes that could be really fun. And it's not just now that that happens, it's been happening for a long time. The, the motor head in this all, right? So, too bad he didn't name it. <laughs> should put a name across the front of it. I should ask if he ever, they ever named the tractor. Early Briggs, eight horse. Pull start only, probably has no charging system in it. Going from the output on that to a belt that has a tensioner on it to make it go and stop. 
driving a chain to a three-speed transmission to a torque tube from the original uh, I think he said 39 Ford was the rear end in it and then that weight I forget what he said that weight was they made a bunch of them and it is the casting for one of them and they just added more weight to the rear end at one time it had a plow blade on the front we could not find the plow blade we did find the hookup for it the frame hitch but not the actual plow blade itself back tires are locked brake drums are locked tried tapping on them a little bit there we couldn't get them to free up i think this one started to move a little bit when we we're trying to get it on the trailer and i guess they had a some kind of tiller drag behind tiller that was on the rear for digging up a garden at some time all right i said we get that hood off of there we start getting into it and uh see if we can get the engine to run go have some fun it's gonna put it up on a lift but we don't have enough room it's a little too wide it's got a couple of clips that hold it on the other side too. pull them out and then it looks like we got two bolts on each side we get the front off of there gives a little access to the engine Well, my favorite tell is what condition the, the fuel is in. <laughs> well, <laughs> hold on a minute. Yeah, that's not a great sign. Hopefully, he said it was fairly and Oh, I could smell it already. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> She's got some tar in there. And it's definitely got fluid in there. And it's got like half a tank. Oh, and you can see the scaliness against the wall over there. She's pretty bad. Yeah. Because <laughs> you get an idea what the carbs are going to look like too. Let's... We gotta get that fan shroud off of there to get the critters out of there just so we can get it to spin, get the plug out of it, throw a little bit of oil down the center. It looks like we might have to get that big center nut out of there. Yeah, we have to get that center nut out of there. And those two, this will come out of the way so the fan shroud can come forward. Hopefully the hardware is accessible. Yeah, we got one there. One there. One there, we gotta get the tank off anyway. There, and one on that side. All right, let's go. Probably start disassembling that tank first. There's the sediment bowl. It's a good vintage wine. Looks like that fuel valve is possibly out. Let's go see if that'll spin in a little bit. Or do anything. Right. Hopefully it's shut off. We're gonna go take that nut off the back side, take the fuel line off. We'll just take this bracket right with it. See if you can get the whole tank to come off as one piece. Deal with it later. Brought in some light. So see what we're doing. Yeah, it looks like it's, yeah, it's gonna turn the whole thing. I'm gonna need a, a 716s or 3 716s, good. Hopefully that doesn't piss out on us. It's gonna stink. That's a dig a little for those. Come on, don't break. Good. Those are head bolts too, so we gotta make sure we put them back in during the uh, 
compression part of it so we don't blow out what there is for head gasket. We can run it, we can spin it with no plug in it, just got to remember later on to put those in. All right, see if this will come away for us. There we go. <laughs> it's about halfway of gunk. See what we got going down inside here. They make a, uh, a starter generator. It was common in the early tractors. They would have an engine like this that didn't have a charging system, and they would have you know what's called a starter generator. It works as a starter when you're trying to start it, and then after it starts, it recharges the battery. It's got a separate voltage regulator that goes on the side. This should be able to accommodate one if we choose to go that far. That's uh, definitely turned into crud, huh? <laughs> And she's the pastor uh, warranty. Let's get that front tin off. We got those four screws to get out, and let's go dig into the meat and potatoes of the mice. I think this is the last one. That air snorkel may give us a little bit of issue. Let's see. She's chalky. Are you gonna run on us? Ah, <laughs> oh, she's packed. What's holding the? Oh, I forgot to do the pulley. <laughs> Whoops! Go grab an impact gun. We're just getting a little over eager. That's all. What do you think that's gonna do for us on the impact? Let's see what we get. I thought it was gonna put up more of a fight. Somebody made that. I think it doesn't exactly fit the center of it. It looks like somebody hogged out a, a pulley from something else. All right. Let the critters go running. Ooh, she's pretty. <laughs> yeah, nobody living there, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a colorful. Oof. The smell. <laughs> Did the flywheel loosen up too? All right, I gotta go take a little time and clean that up. Get rid of the, get rid of that. I don't see anybody poking the head up. I see some worms. Want a worm? Bottom, bottom of the shroud too. We'll clean all that crap out. We'll get the plug out of it. Get some oil in it and see if we can spin it. And uh, how that does. We probably put those those two bolts back in it and see if we get any compression. If not, we have to go dig in a little bit further for. Uh, you know, any valves that aren't seating. Well, let's go deal with that first. Anybody eating breakfast right now? Let's get that whole house right out. I thought there was a wall between the end. There isn't. Might uh, bring this outside and hit it with the pressure washer. It's finally warmed up enough where I can use it again. Beast of machine, everything's just big on it for eight horsepower. <laughs> Seems like a lot of material, doesn't it? What if what this engine was on? Sometimes you can look them up, they'll be like some coating on them, what they were used for. It doesn't look like anything fancy. I don't see any gear reduction or extended oil pan. It might have a, a, a deeper oil pan. Uh, what was the eight horse ones that were? John Deere. I think some of the early John Deere's had that deep oil pan on them. Right, let's go get the plug out of it and uh, get a little bit of oil down inside the top end. And not much rust on the inside of the plug. It's a good sign. 
So the intake and exhaust are on this side, so the valves are over here on the flathead. We want to try to get some oil to the right. Down in the cylinder. That's more what I'm concerned about, just any kind of crud that's sitting on top of there. Let's go give her a couple of rotations now. Let's see if we can get all the way around. Let's get more crap on the flywheel. Give us a good listen too, you know. See if you hear anything. You might have a uh, a decompression valve, and sometimes they'll make a clanking noise. Go throw those two bolts back in. We'll throw the plug back in it. We'll see if we get any compression. If not, we'll have to open it up and see what we get. I was at a truck show in Barrington, New Hampshire. This is one of the, the bigger East Coast truck shows there was. When I was leaving, there was a guy there with like a VW Doom buggy. I guess you call them doodle bugs. I call this a doodle bug also. Doodle bugs kind of like a homemade tractor. It's kind of wartime where tractors were not available because everything went to the uh, war effort. So people would take like Model A's, Model T's, cut them up and make tractors out of them. Well, this guy used a VW Bug and uh, had like a VW Bug style of this, but where the transmission coming out of the VW, he did the exact same thing, just like a little eight horsepower engine going out of it. And he just had uh, one of those farm uh, slow vehicle <laughs> moving signs up. He drove it there. I don't know how far he went, but when I left the show, I was probably four or five miles from the show and he was putting down the shoulder of a main road, you know? <laughs> so, somebody had, uh, definitely had their, uh, their wits about them. Or balls, I should say. Let's see if we can get any. It's feel a little kind of, yeah, there we go. Now it's going. The first couple times we were getting nothing. It's bouncing off of it, which is good. So this is going to have a, a coil for spark behind the flywheel. Yeah, it's got a good bounce off of it. You should have a, a coil behind the flywheel magneto. And then the points should be in a box right here. So there'll be a set of points under here which sends the signal out to fire. And then usually it's like a kill button. Right there, to shut it off. That's how you would shut it off. I say we're gonna have to go pull that flywheel off. I wanna go check. I'm sure there's mouse crap nest behind it or anyway. Let's see if we can get a puller up on this. We'll get this popped off of here and take a better look what's behind there. I have some stuff, but I don't have bolts very long to go catch that. So before I start trying to search for stuff. Let's go try putting a little bit of pressure on it. Find a good spot. We'll just give it a whack in the center sometimes. That's good enough to get it. Sometimes not. Let's go give her one there. That was moving. Nope. It's about the longest bolts I got. And I'm not crazy about how many threads I'm catching it by. Let's get a little pressure on it though, see what we get. Impact gun. Not in the center. Got oil on it. It's greased up pretty good. Yeah, let's um grab ourselves an impact sock and run it with that. See if a couple of rat tats will shake it loose.
Ah, there we go. <laughs> I thought I was watching a one bolt bend. I was like, it's not going to do it. All right, let's see what we get. Right, it's cracked. I don't know if that's just the outer casing. Probably. Hopefully that's just an insulation. As long as it makes spark, right? That's all we're concerned about. So I'm going to go clean up some of the crap that is in here. Actually, it's... Hold your breath. one of these before this might be when you go to rotate it it might be ones that that give like a snap when it goes across kind of like a a magneto I just feel like I should probably get the plug out of it huh not fighting compression Read it, huh? Caution, do not ever remove <laughs> clamp, magnetize something clamp in place. So I guess if that loses loses its magnetism. Sometimes you have to do that. This looks like it's adjustable too for the timing. It's got a little bit of slots on there. You can kind of rotate, get a little bit out of it. Let's go get that points cover off. We'll take a peek over there, what's going on with that and uh, possibly clean them up. And maybe we'll just put the mag back on there, the follow back on after we clean it and see if it does anything. Let me see if, I don't physically see a, a magnet on there though, huh? So it must be, not using the flywheel to create and must be between it's not the outside which is normal it is the outside here which does it it must work between here and here to run and spin the magnet so it probably doesn't even need the flywheel to make spark although we need it to kind of spin it but i don't think so hmm. maybe we can uh, rig something up to uh, spin this with the flywheel off just to get a look at what we got Probably clean up those surfaces in between then. It does feel like it's rubbing. Yeah, that's the belt behind it, which I can hear kind of making some noises. Yeah, something's got a lot of drag. I took the belt off. I want to say it's in there that's doing it. That's a, yeah, a lot of rub to it. I see some crap. Let's go grab a light. See some crap down inside. I don't know if that's like melted, melted goo of that coil. Could be that. No, I was gonna see me. It's got play on the bottom end. You know, we should probably check the oil on it too. <laughs> Is there a plug in it somewhere? Let's go pop that out of there and see what that looks like. Watch, it's like all full of water. Oh, it's got oil on it. Actually, it doesn't look bad. Getting all the crap settles to the bottom anyway when it sits for a long time, but at least there's not water in it and it's full. That's a good sign. Yeah, let's go get that points cover off. Right above it. Get this guy off here, we'll get some light on it. Pull that back. Missed it. What do you think? All green and fuzzy? Or gray and fuzzy? And green or gray? I'm gonna go with gray. They actually don't look bad. Yeah, some crap on them. Yeah, gray. Gray with a, a, a hint of green. <laughs> yeah. I don't think they were definitely going to make any spark. Let's go see if we had a point gap. 
There you go. There you are opening. <laughs> yeah, you can see him yourself. A little cruddy. Let's, uh, I don't know if I'm going to run a file on them right there. I should pop them out and clean them. I'll decide. Before I forget to show you later, so that, that stop button just pushes that brown tab. That brown tab just rests up against where the wires are going. And it just grounds you out right to that post right there and shuts it down for uh, no spark. Simple. I just got some brake clean. Just kind of want to stay away from oils. And what's this, uh, about a 320 grid or something? Let's see if we can get in there. Close them up again. A little drag on Kind of close them up part way. Let's open them up again, get another piece. Got to get some uh, lady files there, you know, the little fingernail files. At least. Forget. Not exactly on the top of my list when you're thinking. <laughs> Going into the CVS. Plus, they look at you funny. I said, we're gonna go pick away at that for a while, and I'll save you the, the hassle of watching me go. I know. Do my best to whittle away at that and see if we can get a good contact going across them and stick out some way to go spin the motor, see if we can actually get some spark out of it. Let's see if we can blow some air around that. Maybe there's just some crap in there. See some white crap just shot out. We need to spin that direction, which kind of sucks because it's going to spin the nut off. I think we could probably use the nuts to run it. I can't. Could probably just wrap a rope around the back pulley, maybe. For now, maybe we just wrap a rope around that and get a little bit of a spin out of it. See how that works out for us. Yeah, you guys already have, have a better view than I do. So let's see what we get. Let's see if this will work. First of all, I didn't see anything. Did you? One of the other videos people were talking about. I think it was. What was I working on? The four-stroke tiller. A four stroke uh, weed whacker. Kind of just saying that you can see the spark plain as day. <laughs> On camera, it showed up. Didn't you, when you looked at it by a naked eye, it wouldn't show though. I am not seeing anything. Plus, it pulls over really weird. We got to try to figure out what is causing that drag on us. I know all the stuff is still dirty and cruddy yet, but we're missing it somewhere. I heard you. Let's go try with a plug from this century. I did not see anything. What time? Now, nah. let's go uh, get a meter. And we'll go probe those set of points. We'll see if we're getting an on off signal coming from those points. So the points are physically opened right now. Of course, it's showing. Actually, are we on? Now we need to be on ohms. That's not going to work for us. Anyway, so we're looking pretty much like a closed circuit, open circuit. But the points are open. I got to get these wires off of here to eliminate them. And then I'm just going to go probe from this point 
to ground anywhere on the body and just make sure that those open and closed right now it's supposed to be an open circuit but the coil and the condenser are in that circuit with the wires on there let me get rid of them all right so now those wires are off let's go try that again so we just want to go on right there and anywhere in the body and it should stay open and can you see the meter and it's open then when we turn it so that they close that should close and it did so the points are doing what they should they are opening and closing let's go bounce it off of that again open closed so the points are working nothing saying the condenser is doing what it's supposed to be doing and or that coil or magneto that we looked at I have a feeling that that is suspect. So let's get, I don't know if we have any wires that are funky on there. Another thing is we don't want to ground, like th this should be isolated right here, that if that touches, that's grounded to the body, that's going to be an issue too. And this is the ground side of that coil right there, those little wires coming off. They need to be grounded on that side. I mean, we'll try taking that little nut off right there, get some fluid on there so we don't break that. But it's rubbing. Does it kind of look like it's offset to you too? Doesn't it look like there's more of an air gap here than on the bottom. And it's causing it to rub. We get underneath, take a look. Maybe we just got a bunch of rust to clean off of it. Yeah, there. I don't like what that, what this melted looking stuff is though. I don't know what's going on with that. Almost like the coil melted itself down and dripped down below. Kind of think that's what happened, huh? That's probably what all this stuff is. All that potting that came off of there. And them rubbing is not going to work for us. Maybe we could loosen these three up. I don't want to. I'm just trying to be real fragile with those wires, though. You know, I don't want to bust them. Hmm. Let's, uh. I know the light gets you. Hold on. Let's go see if we can rotate that and see what it looks like. Run some sandpaper or scotch braid over that. We'll clean that crap off of there. But it definitely looks like there's no air gap between there at all, right? That looks pretty tight. That's our rub. Yeah, I wonder if we loosen those bolts up, we can get it just to kind of go a little bit center of it. Is there we get that one off? Let's go see what we got. This should still be unhooked. Yes, it is. So that wire should be not grounded. Let's see if we get a not grounded signal. Hmm. That, that's high. That's in the meg. If that said like 10 ohms or something would be an issue. That's a half million ohms right there. All right. Let's go see. The stud sticking out that should be open and isolated not grounded out same thing that's up and really high and then this one is the one that's going across the coil so that one should have uh, like 30 ohms maybe is a guess and that's not good that should that's the windings going across the coil coil might be open internally try uh, getting a better bite on it essentially from this wire to this wire it's just a bunch of windings going across it and you do get some resistance on it we are not getting a good number open let's go try right on the wires himself hey 
And right on cue, the compressor decides to make the noise. Let's make sure our meter's working. Yeah. Yeah, that is not good. That is a dead coil. That might have been what it was uh, taken out of commission for, right there. Lost spark, and it got parked, you know, or just age. The fact that I we see all that stuff down below that dripped out, that kind of was indicating that uh, there was a, definitely an issue. All right, let's see if we can get that screw out of there and get the the three off of the outside of here. See if this whole thing will slide back for us and get a better look at it. So I think this is going to have to come off first, kind of eyeballing from behind that the, the aluminum gets smaller than what this is. But let's go give her a couple of love taps, see if we break it free. What is that? Will that pop off of there? Has that got like two little clips that flip up and this section comes out. It kind of looked like it moved, didn't it? I don't break nothing. Kind of looked like that was a clip that was holding it. Yeah, there you go. Huh. I like working on something I've never worked on before. It's a good education. The magnet works. Yeah, I think it just blew out chunks though. What was that? Where'd that go? Is that part of that bracket? Let's go see if we can wiggle that wire out of there. Yeah. It looks like it's got some kind of a cloth going around it and then it, it leaked out right here. It leaked out all the tar. The tar bits on it. Well, at least you can see the top of that magnet now. Let's, um, I don't know if we can get that all the way out of there, but. Got a bunch of electrical tape on it. Let's go see if we can put that to the side. And can we rotate that now to get a better look at what's happening here? Here's that tar I was talking about leaked down. Feel it rubbing anymore. I'm go clean that up. But the problem is, we need one of these. And there's a bubble, a couple of bubbles sticking out of it right there too. And I don't have one of these. <laughs> is there anything else we could replace it with? Hmm. What else can we? Like a regular modern, more modern magneto. Problem is, like I said, they, they usually fire off the magnet that's up in the flywheel, not down here like this one is. And you can tear it apart, try to find where the break in the wire is and rewind it and all that kind of happy stuff. I really don't know if I want to get into that. I may have to go do some homework and see what's available for this. See so if you can find a part number or anything on it. I'm sure there's a model number on here. We can look up. Yeah. Let's um let's buzz it out from just in case I'm making a mistake. It might be a primary secondary circuit. Those wires are not supposed to have resistance across them. Let's go check them to the body. I just might be making an, an error. I'm assuming something that I should not be assuming. It's still in the meg. Let's go check the other side. Wire wheel wouldn't hurt on this thing either, huh? Yeah, just open. 
Yeah, it's just an open circuit. I'm gonna take a wire wheel and clean off some of this crap so I can get a good ground on there. Just to, before I condemn it, make sure I'm not doing a, a doing it this justice. That a word? Should really be open on this anyway. I'm pretty sure that it's going across these windings is, is what we want to see, not to the core, but plus I gotta keep my fingers off of it because you'll you'll your body can be work as a ground. Did we just get, Do we just get the number we were looking for? We just get zeros across it? Hold on. That's about what we're supposed to be getting. Hmm. I wonder if moving the wires around gave us anything. You know what I mean? Like right in the very ends of them that were kind of wiggling a little bit. I'm going to go clean some stuff up. We're going to go pop that back together. And then we're going to go try it one more time. So I got it cleaned up. And I know the two clips that locked it down. We have these. But what do you think this did? This fell out of it. I don't know if it was from something else. Maybe it's not even for. For this. Maybe it just fell in. Or broke off of somewhere too. I don't see an area. It was kind of like, what, like right down in this area, wasn't it? Like stuck under there. Maybe that's what was rubbing. Yeah, I see we go. We try to put it back together without it. And I see what we get. Is that rubbing? Is that bare wire right there? Say. Let's see if this will all fit right back down in there again. So that's got to go. Let's go pull that up and around. And that one goes over there. Well, the magnet's still good. Yeah, I don't see a place for that, do you? Where that little piece would have come off? without it for now though so was it like that or the other way around should we go like that I say we put it back together one more time we'll put the screws back in it we'll put those wires back on and we'll give it a spin again see what we get maybe we got lucky all right, let's try it again. I didn't see anything. It looks like it's rubbing like it did though. I definitely think that little metal clip that was down inside there was causing us an issue. Let's see if we can get around one more time. Nah, I'm not seeing anything. And a couple of you I know are gonna say that you know, you got rust here and there that's kind of causing, you don't have a clean surface. On a spark plug, on this end of it, spark's gonna jump. If there's rust on here or not, this is not, the, the gap between here is not gonna do it. You could literally get rid of the spark plug and you could hold that wire, you know, that far away and it should jump going across it, you know, a good quarter inch and uh, jump that arc. So 
the fact that there's a little bit of crud or something in between here, it really doesn't do anything to it. It'll arc right across that. Just not on this one. Hey, I think I might be noticing my mistake. I'm pretty sure I saw him when he wrapped the rope around. He wrapped the rope this way. <laughs> I'm looking at that. The way that knot is, that rope is supposed to go clockwise around that. Whoops. <laughs> Let's go try spinning it the other direction. See what we get. <laughs> Hopefully it gets sparked. Let's see what we get. <sighs> Not. I'm going to try hooking a drill of some sort up to the front, see if we can spin it on the nut, get a little bit of RPMs out of it. Let's right, see what we get. We get nothing. We got dead battery. <laughs> uh oh. No spark. Nope. The only last thing I can try and do is change the condenser. I'm pretty much convincing myself though that that magneto is uh, just about done, unfortunately. All right, so I threw another condenser on there and I bypassed the wiring. I don't know if you see the red wire down here. The wire coming from the condenser coming over has like a metal jacket on it. And just in case that was an issue, we're gonna bypass that with a jumper wire. Let's go see what we get. Now, unfortunately, I'm pretty much now convinced that uh, that coil is just so. so search my stash I'm not sure if this engine is the same it's got the same external kill wire for the points but I'm not sure if it's gonna have the same flywheel and magneto and everything in there so there's that one and there's this one over here this looks like it might be a Tecumseh. But I wonder if we could do a repower on this. Super start. And it's got that starter generator on it. Like we talked about. The shaft looks like it could be the right size. Hmm. Decisions. We'd be stumped but we're not out so i'm gonna go search for the parts on that and see what is available this looks more modern so i don't think the insides of that's going to be the same it will have a magneto but i have a feeling it's the coils mounted up here i don't know if we can peek in anywhere yeah that one's mounted on top so that's not going to work for us well guys it wasn't for lack of trying if I had the uh, capacity to get spark, I think we could have got her fired up, but it's just not in the cards right now. I haven't given up. We have other options to go do. Yeah, I'm not just going to throw it away and cry. <laughs> Worst case, we'll repower it with something else, but I'm going to go try chasing that Magneto, see if I can find one, how much they are, that kind of thing. I got a couple of um, engines at home. Possibly I have one. I kind of doubt it. I give that about a 5% success rate on it, but you never know. I'm going to go about that, and uh, as far as this video, I think we're done, unfortunately. I was hoping to have it run and fire and make smoke and giggle like a schoolgirl and all that kind of stuff, but it's just not going to happen this time. But uh, hopefully we can continue on shortly with this and uh, have us putting around like uh, good old Green Acres. <laughs> all right, guys. Till the next one, I'll see you later. Thanks for hanging out with me and uh, having a little bit of fun wrenching, dragging old junk from underneath houses and trying to revive them. Till then, I'll see you. Engine stash. The one we got is a Wisconsin. Yeah, it looks like it's got to be about the same horsepower. Uh, shaft looks a little bit bigger. And for elderly engines, I'm trying to think what else we got. I don't think we got much more. There's just sure there is a couple of snowblower engines. We could possibly use one of those. Like an like an eight over ten over there. There's another one here this one probably an eight 
somewhere we have that one that the YouTuber gave us. That old big heavy ass Briggs. I wonder where that ended up. Yeah, that might be a little too much. <laughs> I think it's the one that we did. Yeah, but it weighs a ton. We got for a shaft. That shaft looks like it might be the right size. Hmm. That would kind of go with that machine too now, wouldn't it? What's it got for spark? I don't even know what the engine is. That was like a Briggs BB or something like that. That might be in our, our victim. And for 20 bucks, delivered it in a few days, the make a replacement coil. Looks like you just gotta use your core going through the center of it over again. And that should bring back our spark and we continue to see if we can save that engine. Awesome. It ain't dead yet. Where's your stick? Where's your stick? Where are you going? Where are you going? Hey! That's alright, Justin. <laughs> oh, that's alright.